So the first thing that we have to do in respect of this question is to determine our big, determine our group structure. And we've got three companies. So let's just work out what has happened. The parent company is big. And it says in note one that big purchased 60 more, 64 million shares in small. So that's 64 out of 80, which means that small is the subsidiary because we have 80 percent. 18 months later, big purchased 8 million shares in tiny. And tiny has 32 million shares. So it appears that tiny is an associate because we've got more than 20 percent. But then small comes along a few years later and it buys 16 million shares out of the 32 million shares in tiny. Which means that it owns 50 percent of tiny Tiny is therefore a subsidiary of Big because Big controls 75% of the votes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a little table which says that Big has a direct stake 80% and 25%. And it has an indirect investment, 80% of 50%, which means that Big is entitled to 65% of the profits of Tiny. And we give the NCI the balance, 20% in small and 35% in Tiny. So we have therefore allocated 100%, i.e. we've allocated all of our two investments between the group and the NCI. So I think that's absolutely uh, essential. I mean, even though there won't necessarily be any marks going for it, if we get that wrong, if we get those relationships wrong, we've got a big problem. What I'm now going to do is to work my way through the question line by line. So we know that both small and tiny are subsidiaries. The first thing we have is PPE. PPE is not cross-referenced sent to anything, so I'm simply going to go 56 plus 66 plus 66. There's no fair value adjustments, which is unusual. The examiner tends to like fair value adjustments, but if we add those up, that comes to 178. Next, we have our investments. And it says in notes one to three, so I'm going to leave those figures until I get to notes one to three. Now we have inventories, add them together, 44 plus 45 plus 25. We have an inventories figure of 114, but I've referenced that to one of the notes, so I think we might have some adjustments to put through. With receivables, we've got a figure of 86. Again, an adjustment might be required. And for cash in hand, there don't appear to be any adjustments. 8 plus 6 plus 3 gives us a figure of 17. The share capital of the parent company is taken directly to the statement of financial position. And the share capital of our two investments is taken to the net assets working. Now, when we get to our net assets working, we have to be a little bit careful. For small, there's an SFP date and there's an acquisition date. But for tiny, the situation is slightly more complex. There's the SFP date. There's the date that we acquired control over tiny. But when we made our first investment, Tiny was only an associate. So we need to determine the net assets at that date as well, because we need to allocate profits from all of the dates between the group and the NCI if necessary. So in terms of our share capital, 
An SC is perfectly acceptable in the examiner working. 80 million for small and for tiny. 32, 32 and 32. When it comes to retained earnings, the retained earnings of the parent belong to the group. So we can slot in 69 million. Like so, for small it's 59, and for tiny it's 19. When it comes to our loans, I'm simply going to add them together. Don't appear to be any issues in terms of intergroup balances for loans. So long term loans, 75 million. In terms of payables, those are 17 million, but there could be some intragroup issues to deal with. So I might come back to that later. And as far as the overdraft is concerned, oh, sorry, I've missed off tax. Uh, tax. That's wrong for trade payables, sorry. Trade payables is 25, 45, 56. And tax, there's no adjustments for, so that's 17. And the bank overdraft, there's no adjustments for. And that's 31. In the exam, if you do insert an incorrect number, don't use Tipex, don't use liquid paper, don't try to rub it out. A simple line through the number is perfectly adequate. The markers are not going to mark you up or down because you've been using Tipex. In fact, it makes it a lot more difficult because your papers will be scanned into a machine and Tipex could potentially smudge. So try to avoid that if at all possible. Let's now take a look at the additional information. So we're told that we bought our investment in small when small had reserves of 22 million. So we go to our net assets working and slot in 22 million. We're told that the consideration was 91 and a half. So we go to a goodwill calculation. Direct cost. 91 and a half. On the 1st of October X3, which is our acquisition date, we have a property which had an increase in fair value of 4 million. Now normally we would also address PPE at this stage, but the question specifically says the property had been sold by small by the SFP date. So that fair value adjustment no longer applies at the SFP date because we've replaced the PPE with cash. We physically sold that asset so therefore we do not have to adjust PPE as well. So that's note one dealt with. Note two, we made our investment in Tiny when Tiny had profits Of 10 million. The cost of that investment was 12 and a half. Now what I'm going to do here, because there's no goodwill arising at this date, I'm actually going to set up working number six because at this date Tiny is an associate and the cost of the investment in the associate was 12.5. And a quick little check. The cost of the investment in small was 91.5. The cost of the investment in tiny is 12.5. If I add those two together, that comes to 104 million. And that figure ties into the investments line in my statement of financial position. Always check the numbers, just in case there's been some sort of adjustment. But there hasn't here. We're also told that there's no fair value adjustments to have to deal with, so therefore we can ignore that. 
uh, in terms of any further issues in note two. Note three, on the 1st of April X9, Small purchased 16 million of tiny shares for a cash consideration of 29 million. Now what I'm going to do here is go up to the goodwill calculation And I'm going to say that we have an indirect cost. And that indirect cost is that we have, sorry, I should say 80%. We own 80% of small. Small has invested in tiny. And that figure is 29 million. So 29 times 0.8 gives us a figure to put in to our goodwill calculation of 23.2. We've also got to deal with the other 20% of the cost, so I'm going to go down to the NCI and what we're saying here is that the NCI have small have an investment in tiny because they own 20% of small so that's going to be 20% of 29 million that's 5.8 million negative we're also told at that date that the shares are worth $1.81.25 What I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, well, this means that we've actually got a step acquisition. Our investment in tiny has increased from 25% to 75%. And if that happens, what you have to do is to revalue your original investment to fair value. So the fair value at the first of the fourth X9, it's going to be 8 million shares at a figure of 18125, and that works out as 14.5 million. Now, I'm not going to say that we've got a fair value adjustment of 2 million here because we've been t treating Tiny as an associate and therefore we have to also take into consideration our share of the post-acquisition profits. But I'm now going to take that figure and go up to my goodwill calculation, direct cost, 14.5 million. per working number six. And you can do this in a number of ways. It says during the year ended, September X9, Tiny made a profit after tax of eight million and paid no dividends. Why is this important? Well, we're not told the reserves of Tiny at the acquisition date. But if we acquired Tiny on the 1st of April X9 and our year end is the 30th of September X9, we acquired Tiny six months ago. If Tiny has made profits of 8 million in a year, it must have made profits of 4 million in six months. Therefore, I'm going to go up to my working here and I'm going to say that the profits at the date of acquisition of 15 million because that's 19 million less six months worth of profits i.e. six twelfths of 8 million at the acquisition date and we're told that the profit accrued evenly. Note number four we've dealt with in effect investments in subsidiaries and associates are shown at cost. Next we've got some unrealized profits to deal with. I think the question is a little bit over messy here but let's just identify what we're dealing with profit in
inventories. Um, Tiny used to sell at cost plus 30%, but from the 1st of April, this was cost plus 20%. And the inventories were all purchased since the 1st of April. If we go back to basics, cost plus profit equals sales price. For the purposes of this question, that profit is 20%. 20% of what? It is a markup. So therefore, cost is 100%, giving us a sales price of 120%. If we then take a look at who owns the inventories, Big has 9 million. And if we then turn over the page, which I seem to have lost. So we've got 9 million in Big's accounts. So the profit is 20 120ths, which is 1 sixth. So therefore the profit is 1.5 million. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to credit inventories 1.5 million. And that's come from working number seven. And I'm going to debit the profits of the seller. Well, Tiny has sold the goods, so I'm going to Tiny's reserves. Inventories for big. At the SFP date, take away. 1.5 million and small has profits of 7.8 million again the relationship between profit and sales price is the same it's 20 120th 20 divided by 120 times 7.8 million as far as small is concerned gives me a profit figure in closing inventories of 1.3 million Who's made that profit? It's tiny. Up to working number two. So we're going to take profits of 1.3 million away from tiny. And 1.3 million away from inventories. For every debit you put through always try to make a credit at the same time. So that deals with note number five. Next we come to intragroup balances. And these balances have been agreed, six million and five million respectively. So what we can do is we can reduce receivables by six and five and payables by six and five. If you want to work in round thousands or real numbers, it's entirely up to you. That's why I'm showing both would be acceptable in the exam. We're then given information in respect of the NCI. And we're told at the acquisition date, so if we go to NCI, at acquisition, 22 million for small and 17 million for tiny. Now those NCI figures also go into our goodwill calculations. Twenty two million and seventeen million NCI at acquisition. We have therefore dealt with every single piece of information in the question. It is down on paper. It is potentially earning us a mark. Once you reach that stage, always go to your net assets working and it's time to do some housekeeping. So since acquisition, 
the profits of small have increased by 33 million. Between the associate and the acquisition date, they increased by 5 million. And then at the SFP date, they are up to 48.2 million, which is an increase of a further 1,200. Goodwill, we know, arises at acquisition. So in respect of small, I'm going to take away 106 million. So the goodwill for small is seven and a half. At what date are we going to determine the net assets for tiny? It is the date at which we achieve control. And at that date, the net assets of tiny are 47. So we've got two goodwill figures, and if I add those together, that gives me a grand total of 15.2 million for goodwill. Let's transfer that into non-current assets, and that has come from our goodwill calculation. In terms of the NCI, we've got the figures at acquisition. Well, since acquisition, for small, the NCI are entitled to 20%. And the profits of small, if we go to our net assets working, have increased by 33 million. So 20% of 33 million is 6.6. .6. If we go to retained earnings for the group, for small, it's 80% times 33 million, which is 26,400. For tiny, remember this is the date that the NCI arose in respect of tiny. So it's only going to be the adjustment between acquisition date an SFP date. So since that date, profits have increased by 1,200. And we then go to working number one. What proportion of the profits are we giving to the NCI? That is 35%. So that is 420. In respect of the group, here we have to be a little bit careful. We're going to give the group 65% of the profits between the date it became a subsidiary and the SFP date. So that's 65% times 1,200, which is 780. But we are also going to give the group 25% of the profits from the date it became an associate to the date it became a subsidiary. So between those two dates, the profits of Tiny increased by 5 million. Which is 1, 2, 5, 0. What's the other side of the entry? We credit retained earnings and we debit investment in associate. So share 
to the first of the fourth x9 is 1 to 50. Therefore, at the date we achieved control in respect of tiny, the value of the investment was 13,750, but we've said that the fair value of those shares is the balancing figure, and that fair value is 750. The group is entitled to that profit, so I'm now going to adjustment associate to subsidiary. I'm going to give the group that 750. And that would normally appear in the income statement if you've been asked to prepare the income statement. So if you have a step acquisition from associate or from trade investment to subsidiary, you revalue your original holding at the control date and the gain goes to group income statement and therefore will flow through to reserves. So there's a lot of tricky, nasty little adjustments floating around there. So we end up with two NCIs, 22,800 and 17,420, giving us a grand total of 40220. I'm going to take that 40220. That's come from working number four, like so. When it comes to retained earnings, 69 million. plus various bits and pieces, and if we add this up, 98,180,000 is our grand total. I'm going to take that grand total, 98,180,000, like so. Payables add up to 45. Let's now add up our grand total. And the bottom half of my statement of financial position is 396400. What have we got on the top? Inventories are 111, 200. Receivables are 75. And the top half of our SFP adds up to 396, 400. And our statement of financial position balances.